Mm, today I have a fragile delivery. Now I'm going to open and see what is it. So it seems it's very well packed, so I'll have to do another cutting. Okay, look what we have here. Is a Pentax XW10. Oh, finally. Pentax, Ry Ryko Pentax Accessories, IPS SMC Pentax XW10, 7514. Okay, let's see what is it. Oh, that's the final countdown. Mm -hmm. I love these Pentaxes because, especially because of this. And both cases they come with. So now I have three and a half, five, seven, and now the ten. Okay, let's open and see what is inside. That's the Pentax IPs. Okay, I've disinfected it just to make sure that no coronavirus will pass to us. As there is, it looks a little bit wet. Okay, now that's the Pentax. Lovely glass. And this side also beautiful. Okay, this is a Pentax 10 millimeter eyepiece. Let's see how the view looks like through this eyepiece. And that was the view to the Pentax XW SMC uh, 10 millimeter eyepiece. The telescope I was using is my lovely Skywatcher ED80 Apochromatic Pro Series uh, refractor telescope. And the eyepiece is this beautiful view, clear. I'm watching the transit of the shadow of the satellite Io on the face of the planet Jupiter. Jupiter is there somewhere. Oh yeah, here. And oh yeah, here. And the image I use the 3.5 millimeter Pentax and also Nirvana. Uh, sorry, Myriad which is here 2.5 again but the image with this t 10 millimeter one is sharpest i can see the dot of the shadow of the io clearly with those ones it just spreads a little bit and you can see the turbulence in the air sometimes but this one is most of the time is sharp very good very good the details is amazing uh, i have a delos 10 millimeter and i think this one compares very well with the Dallas 10 millimeter. The color is more natural. And uh, the Dallas gives a little bit red purple tinge. 
this one is neutral color. The cloud bands and the shadow of the I.O. are so delicate but visible and clear, sharp, as if drawn by a very fine brush. When you look at uh, this 3.5 in these conditions, it's like that as if you are actually looking at a smudge most of the time. Sometimes it gets a little clear, but most of the time it's like a smudge. This one is beautiful. Oh. Yeah, the sky background is completely dark with this. And then you see the planet a little bit lighter scatter around. Minimum, I'm, I must say that it's very minimal lighter scatter. Almost negligible, you will not notice it if you don't know it is there. And uh, yeah, amazing, beautiful. Oh, I've not seen such a thing. Telling you something, it's laughable, but my pieces have a smells of their own, some of them. And uh, this eyepiece has a nice rubber smell. It's rubber, but it's nice rubber smell, kind of aromatic. <laughs> Uh, of course, you notice this smell because you put your eyes in the uh, on the eyepiece, and then your nose is very close to this rubber, so you can smell it. You can at least see ten different albedo features on the cloud tops of Jupiter uh, with this eyepiece. Just a tiny dot, like a letter O, but you can see sharp on it everything. In the north equator belt and lower than that toward the poles, you see a lot of details. And in south equator pole, which is a little bit more prominent, darker, you see the shadow of the, of the eye of moving there and also some knots and festoons. And then toward the south pole you go, it just becomes, you know, not very clear, just uniform gray. Oh, oh, I changed it to 3.5 because on 10 I could see some a little tiny dot as if point of light appearing on the limb of the planet Jupiter and I was not sure if it is true or not. I use with this and I can see now that the that dot is now moved a little bit. It can be a star, it can be one of the satellites, Galilean satellites, so Galilean moons. So it's beautiful. And the weather is now settled. Of, uh, I can see clear with this. Unfortunately, the trees are not blocking the... <laughs> gradually. In a few minutes, I think they will block the planet. Okay, I'm now looking at the planet um, Saturn. The Jupiter went behind the trees and I uh, cannot see it anymore. Uh, but Saturn is now visible. And uh, I was looking at it with this uh, Pentax 3.5, which is good. But this is more more clear on this one, brilliant. And surprise, surprise, when you look at a corner like this, it's, it's sharper even. If you look at the middle, it's sharp, but you look at a corner like that, and it stays in the field of view for a long time, it's sharper. I'm looking at the planet Jupiter after uh, spell and period of bad weather. The thing immediately after the bad weather is never good. You see a lot of turbulence in the air. Uh, but I'm trying two eyepieces uh, which are 10 millimeter. Uh, one of them is this uh, Pentax XW 10 millimeter and I've compared it on the Jupiter with this Teleview Delos 10 millimeter. And I must say that I found the Pentax 10mm sharper than this, slightly a tad sharper. This one immediately shows some of the features of the equatorial belt. This one although is very good, but under this condition and on this object, on my eyes, on this telescope, this is the Sky Watcher Star Travel 102, uh, of a, a, a chromatic refractor, so it has some chromatic aberration. This is sharper than this and more pleasant thing. So, Teleview Delos is a really superb eyepiece, but in this case, it, it, Pentax is a winner. <laughs>